Horizontes was a 2017 Night Cities Challenge winner that aimed to connect two underrepresented communities in Wichita, Kansas, the predominantly Latino North End and historically African-American Northeast neighborhoods. We are here with Felipe Ortiz and Ivan from the Fresco Exchange for this Horizontes conversation. The Fresco Exchange painted one of the murals that can be found at the Evergreen Evergreen Recreation Center, located at 2700 North Woodland. Welcome. Hello, oh, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourselves and the Fresco Exchange for us? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Mason, and thank you for the space and the opportunity. And I uh, just first want to greet every one of the students that's tuning in here. And uh, thank you for your time and uh, listening to us. It really means a lot to us. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, we're the Fresco Exchange, and uh, this is a collective uh, that it, it's um, got it for artists as an artistic and cultural exchange for artists between Colombia and the United States. And basically, the idea is to promote uh, urban art and street art uh, from Colombia and Latin America uh, in the United States and also be able to exchange best practices in the arts um, while we um, do uh, gallery showings up here in the United States uh, and, and try to also educate the artists, the visiting artists uh, to share best practices in the arts and see how they can apply those themselves to their own communities uh, in Colombia. And so, yeah, and this mural uh, was done in 2018 and this was a part of a, a tour that we did, uh, a seven city tour in 2018, summer of 2018. Uh, and Wichita was one of our stops and we were very grateful to have uh, partnered up with Horizontes and being able to produce a large scale, scale mural uh, within a week uh, and-, and uh, for four days, actually, yeah, it wasn't even a week. And so it was quite the challenge, uh, but we're very grateful to have come and share and, uh, uh, our artwork. And we had a great experience working with everyone involved. And um, yeah, I think Wichita had, had a lot of uh, positive, um, a positive notes in my experience there. And now I hold it dear to my heart. So I'm happy to be talking to you guys about this. Yeah. Are you both primarily muralists or do you work in other forms as well? I, 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 have, I do have two practices, uh, which is my public art uh, practice, which is in the form of murals, uh, public murals. And then I also have my studio practice, uh, which uh, is more canvas oriented and uh, prints, um, anything that's considered more uh, fine art, quote unquote, uh, is my other practice, yes. About me, it's, it's particular because when I start in the art, I start with the murals, and right now I'm doing a lot of murals, but in one time in my story as an artist, and also it became at the same time with the COVID, uh, I start to do a lot of studio work, so right now I'm doing both. But I'm still doing more murals. Uh, for me, it's um, more common to, to work in murals. And also because I'm directing here in Cali, Colombia, a uh, non profound organization that promotes street art. And we have been working with Fresco Exchange also with some times with uh, people from the United States to come to Colombia and paint with us. So, yeah, in my experience, it's more mural. Will you talk us through the, the stenciling and, and all of that that went into this humongous four-day project? Yeah, sure. I, I have to talk about it, but I'm gonna ask Felipe some help because I, sometimes my English is not so well, so. Yeah, but I remember it was a challenge for us because it was a huge uh, stencil and we didn't have the time to cut it up so you guys in Horizontes project help us with a lot of people who could that. Uh, I, I, I mean, this mural is more from, uh, made with the people hands and also with us, our hands and with our like concept and talent. 
but we didn't could do it with without their help you know uh, it was like 15 no sorry 50 uh, sheets of those that we made um, so it was a really good experience because uh, it was a like a collaborative how do you say that collaborative work with them yeah yes collaborative. Yeah, yeah. um it was a challenge but i really i'm really happy about the the final result i do remember that the that it ended up being even more of a community work because you guys because the stencils needed cutting out so we went into the evergreen community center and then just got the exacto knives out and it became a couple of evenings of just cutting and talking and 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 getting all of the fine details cut out in the in the paper sheets yeah and they were so open to learn how to cut it and also have the patient to cut those because that's a lot of it. we have to we have to have a lot of patience to, to cut it but it was amazing and i remember when we were painting the stencil they didn't finish to cut the stencils so sometimes i go down from the lift and then go to cut with them and then go up <laughs> in the lift to help um felipe with other things it was amazing so, so yeah, I think I think what he's saying is, is really true that this really became to be a, a true community project because everyone everyone was involved. You know, even if it was one hour or even it was the people that brought us lunch, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the people that like found this as a meditation, you know, uh, people learn a lot through this. And, you know, I, it, I should point out, it's a hand cut stencil and it takes a long, long time. We only had four days. And so that that's the beauty of it to see everyone come together, uh, no matter the challenges, you know, which time limit was one of them for us. Um, but to see everyone come together uh, really does bring a whole new sense of the work community for me, I think, when it comes to Muralink. I remember the people make like a community just for that week. And it's our mural, you know, it's not just the mural from Felipe and Ivan, it's the mural from the people. Right. And, and I think, uh, an interesting metaphor was that each of those 50 sheets by themselves, people were, were cutting them out, but had no idea what the larger picture of it was. So they were taking their time and spending their time, yet they were just cutting out lines. And then to see the end result of it all fitting together and creating this was like, wow. It, it was really mind blowing. And, and here right, we can see um, some of that fine detail. So let's back up to the, the mural as a whole, and we'll talk about all of the different pieces and, and aspects of it. Um, so here is the mural overall. Will you talk about who this character is and what what he represents? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. This is based um, it's based on the image of Tlaloc, which is the uh, god. Uh, of thunder and rain in uh, Aztec culture, Aztec and Mayan culture. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he symbolizes um, both positive and negative, you know, because he's the God of rain. And so as he can cause floods and, you know, like tornadoes and hurricanes and everything like that, he can also bring fertility to land you know for for agriculture and growth uh to produce uh and, and so it can be both you know um i think that's why there's a duality between the two sides of the feathers you know i think what we were, that's what we were trying to um represent there uh and um you know and as long as yeah, also with it went with the background you know i, I think with the blue, different shades of blues, like we were also trying to represent like the movement of fluidity of water, uh, kind of uh, through that idea. Yeah, and I remember we we took this this god because when we were like um, talking with with you guys with the horizontal people, they they told us that in this area 
some people like join to practice some dance things about their culture and we saw one one night you remember Felipe? yes and it was so nice because we were to we want to represent their culture and what they believe and do and that's that was this piece of art is the the result of that right yeah and again here is here was another clear example of how the community can react to pieces like this you know and the impact that it can have uh in a social scale you know uh where people feel identified and when people go see because there's something that's calling them you know uh, that's part of their culture it's part of their identity you know uh, and it represents them so they want to go see that and for us as, as artists all to feel it's extremely humbling to have or to feel represented by the people you know who are there uh looking at their work and you know and and they're creating community alone just by that even just by looking at it and creating conversations you know and it now it like it hits almost like uh like an intimate node within yourself you know and you got you, you start asking like what it means or what it feels you know it's like a place within you and when when people share that with one another i feel like inevitably it's already creating some sort of community uh through that uh, and to have seen that uh, for me was probably very special um it was our first time in wichita kansas uh which i did not realize how diverse it would be uh and that was probably one of the most shocking things for me uh to see it, how many you know the amount of latino and and people that we ivan and i represented with you know uh and we felt at home even though we were so far away from home and i, I think that to me was really beautiful you know that we were welcome uh and, and people could relate to what we were doing um, no matter how far away we were coming from so that to me was kind of sort of the the most heartwarming experience I think that I felt there to, to feel welcome, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to because we haven't talked about that in here to make that that connection really explicit, right? So you two are from Cali, Colombia, which is also where Gleo, the green elevator artist is from. And so then you were here at the same time and it became, yeah, just a a big kind of family reunion to an extent, right? But then also just meeting the people here and and being such so instantly a part of the of the larger Wichita family. Well, let's back up again and and go through some of the artistic aspects of this, just actual production of the mural side of this. Um, ironically, you did do Tlaloc, right? The sorry, I should whisper Tlaloc the god of rain and it rained in this october like five inches through the month of october uh i do remember it just raining and raining and raining you had four days and it just continued to rain um so will you talk from start to finish um where did you start on the mural kind of how that background started what materials you used and and how you finished it out yeah, definitely. Uh, so I, I think it's 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 really cool. This was now the second time collaborating with Ivan. We had done a previous mural before, and so which was challenging at first. That uh, you know we were just figuring out like how to mix our styles. But for this one, it was the second time around, so we already had a game plan for this. Um, not only that, but we had a time limit, so. You know, I, I feel like whenever it comes to this bigger job, like bigger scale uh, murals, there's always like some sort of formula that you can use uh, technically or logistically in order to like keep yourself in check and sort of make sure that you've done enough uh, progress for the day in order to complete the deadline. Um, so that's kind of like how we approached it at first. We had designed it already uh, a couple of weeks before. And uh, luckily, you know, um, the supporting team, which was, I believe, the town, the city of Wichita, right, uh, um, was uh, super helpful in providing a lot of the things, logistical things that we needed, as far as the lift and power wash and, uh, yeah, anything that we, we needed in order to produce this mural was provided and we had a lot of extra support, so that was very helpful. Um, 
one of those things was having two uh, paint sprayers available, which. Yeah. Uh, the, go ahead. No, I, I mean two, two airbrush, but also two um, lifts. Uh, yeah, it's two lifts. Yeah, two lifts, two, two paint sprayer, which you know helped us with the background uh, and also to the gradient in the background. Uh, it was super helpful. Um, and, uh, and then after that, you know, uh, like I said, the people came through, uh, with Ivan and, and sort of, you know, helped out with the larger stencil. Uh, and meanwhile, I think I was just, you know, rushing away right. at those others as fast as I could. So the, the background was paint sprayed on. Right. So, right. So it's a combination, uh, sorry, it's a combination of, uh, uh, vinyl paint, acrylic uh, vinyl paint, uh, and spray paint, right? Uh, the stencil is spray paint, and the feathers and the background are, uh, well, the background is sprayed uh, with a paint sprayer, and then everything else is brush. So, yeah, so all of the, all of the intimate feather work, you hand brushed on right. onto there. Yeah. Yes. We paint for lay with layers. At the beginning, it was the background. We spray it with the airbrushes, and we did though this change between those um, blue and blacks. And then um, Felipe started with the feathers, and I did the um, stencil. But it was from the background to the front. Right. Wow. What were some challenges or some problems that you ran into during the production of this? Uh, time. <laughs> Rain. Rain. Biggest enemy right there. Second biggest enemy. Well, I don't know what you know. What's uh, like injuries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also you remember with the lift because the, the grass was so wet and yes. it doesn't move. Right. You remember? It was an we got our lift stuck. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, you had a very tiny little concrete margin over there, and and that was it. Yeah, the lift was too big. Yeah. So we had again. This is when I think Public Works was super helpful. They brought all these plywood sheets that we yeah. laid on the ground, and then later put the lift on top of that so it could move a little easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and another thing we figured out with design is that line at the left hand of the oh um, that very top. sharp diagonal we, we we couldn't get to the top of that part of the wall so we decided to cut it like that but uh felipe at the end he could he could um paint just one feather in that way so it was yeah i just I wanted it to be balanced, I feel like, and uh, you know, the, it, it also like worked kind of breaking down the composition a little bit. And we, we also knew, for example, like where the shadows would hit and like the angle of some of the shadows. Uh, and so that's why we decided to give it that angle, but, but, but I still had to break from, from that and, and sort of balance the feathers even by sticking one out, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and as on the spot as that was, I think it works out perfectly, right? Like the diagonal as a whole adds a lot of movement and momentum to the piece that would not necessarily have been there had it been a, a straight okay. rectangle. And then there were the, the kind of boxes, those kind of outserts up there at the top as well. A little funky to work with, but man, it's just fine. Was this your first time working with the stencils in this way, or is that a common part of your practice? Um, for me, it's my practice. I just do stencil. I, I don't. I don't do an, another thing, another kind of work. My technique is that one. I have been working with it like for five years now, and I'm improving, of course, with the time. Because you know, when you practice something, you learn some things and then you could make better your your art or whatever you ha are doing. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just a stencil. Uh, this, is, this was my first 
color stencil because I always do black and white stencil. And right now I'm doing color, but that one was my first time. Mm -hmm. So then did that, did that idea of using color this time, did that open up your mind to using color with your stencils down the road? Or did you go back to black and white until recently? Um, that depends, right now that depends on what I want. But sometimes I'm going to color and sometimes I'm going with black and white. But for sure, since this wall, I have the experience to, to include um, color in my stencils. And yeah, it, it was a, a, a really good point in my career because the size and also the color. So for sure, then I did some black and whites, but right now I can do whatever I want. And that's thanks to that wall. Felipe, you had mentioned earlier in the interview that at the beginning, we, you had to figure out how to, how to mix those styles, right? So Yvonne came in with the stencils. Um, is this emblematic of, of your style as well? The Yes, the, the feathers are very much my style and the splashes, you know, there's some like hits. You can you can barely see it here, but I, I've been doing a lot of splashes. It's very like um, expressive sort of art making style that I have uh, in my mural work and in also in my paintings. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely wanted to uh, incorporate as much as we could from each of our own styles. Uh, and uh, honestly, I think that's that's the beauty of collaboration because it, it, it's like a, a moment where where you can be honest with the other person, you know, uh, or or you can also let go, you know, and, and let the other person like, you know, trust the other person's style, knowing that it, it's going to work compositionally, right? And um, and, and so it works vice versa, you know, and and. I feel like we have, you know, we have different skill sets. And so, and some things, you know, Ivan is probably better at doing certain things or I could be better at doing certain other things. So, so it really is like, uh, it's like a good place to be able to meet, you know, uh, with an order, another artist and be able to like consider those values, you know, that we bring to the table. And, you know, for this one, I feel like the result speaks for itself. And we, you know, we kind of, considering the time limit that we had, it, it, was, it was it was really cool uh, to have come to this uh, final result, which I'm pleased with. Absolutely right. I mean, that is the beautiful part. Together, it looks like this. Had it been just Felipe or just Yvonne, even with the same image, stylistically would have looked dramatically different. And that right. is the beauty of, of, of that collaboration and coming together. Wow. Well, wow, very nice. What, what do you hope that the community, as they pass by this on their way to the rec center or on their way home, on their way to the library, what do you hope that the community takes away from this image, from this mural and from this work? You wanna go ahead, Ivan? Okay. <laughs> um, it's difficult to to answer because you don't know if they're gonna feel or think directly to the point of the Aztec God. But the thing is, when you see a mural or art outside, it's to like change their mind or what are they thinking about and give them a different uh, image to explode in their minds and then they can explore that image and find whatever they want. But the sure thing is that day is not gonna be a normal day, you know? It's not gonna be like um, the always things. It's gonna be a different thing. And that's the goal of the art. And when the art is in the streets, that's can make in the, in the people every day. You can change people's days every day with a different kind of colors or shapes. So for me, is that you know, it's changed their um, like 
diary lives daily lives yeah I, th I think for me well, i agree with everything ivan is saying and you know it's it can be difficult because it is it is subjective you know and and you don't know when somebody is going to notice something or when it's going to affect them in a different way you know or make them think of a different perspective you know that really is up to the individual um but one of the good things is that it is there for everyone you know and no matter what or when it comes for you to realize the mural or the meaning or whatever really connects with you that is up to the viewer um and uh you know there was, but there was also i think within within public art uh, there's also like a lot of that goes into it as far as the planning and the location of it uh as an artist you know where you're trying to interpret there and um you know it is in the north end right um and it is predominantly a hispanic community uh central american uh and and mexican mostly and so it this this does connect in a little bit uh to the community uh, and, and we just hope that these people can feel represented through it, you know, and, and be able to tell the story to someone else, you know, so someone else can be inspired by it, uh, you know, uh, and uh, for us, you know, we're not from Wichita, but to have, have met the people every single day and to have had interest from the people, uh, that to me was enough of a sign that this uh, would spread the, this act, this sort of action would spread, and it could only bring positivity to the people. Uh, and and so I wasn't worried, you know, of what would happen based uh, from from that one week that we were there, based on the reactions from the people there. The one week we were there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, very nice. What, what about you? How how has it? Can you tell us maybe in the time where we haven't been there, how people have reacted to it or what the neighborhood feels like nowadays? I mean, it's it's that the idea that we are seeing you drive by and you see this figure that, you know, you see. Especially in the wintertime when everything around is brown, fallen, there is this just like scream pop of the fertility is right around the corner. Like, yes, it looks like this now, just wait. Um, I think the reception is is really good, overall really positive. Um, it's just so striking. I don't know, I don't, I have not seen negative feedback or negative pushback in any sense. Well, that's the best you could hope for. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and only, I think only one of the murals from this entire project has been tagged on and it was a really easy <laughs> tag to add on there, right? But that also just speaks to that idea of a lot of places are tagged, but murals like this, they're just not. They're just adding. This building before was all tagged up. You can see just like time after time after time where it had been painted over, right? This mural then, I don't know, it just... It adds power and and beauty in a way that I don't know a, a blank wall does not. <laughs> That's very cool to hear. Thank you. So it has been three years since since you guys were here. Do you want to talk a little bit about your artistic work in in the last three years? Um, I'm uh, sure, right? There has been a lot more studio time. But. Sure, sure. Um, I have to say that for me, like this trip kind of like changed my career. <laughs> for real, that this was probably one of the largest murals we had done yet at that time. And I, I think of it now and it's like, I almost find it almost, in, I don't even know how we did it in four days. That's really large. Uh, so the energy that must have been going on at that time was really beautiful. And, uh, you know, I, that was a turning point, I think, in my career. Uh, and then from then on, like I, I've dedicated myself to continue my mural practice and, and especially like larger scale and have uh, kind of evolved in, into a particular style that I, that I keep painting called explosive nature. And I've been able to bring that into larger walls and be able to sort of uh, 
kind of master that style on a wall, uh, which for me was almost like impossible before. Uh, but with the experience, including this one, you know, uh, sort of changed my mindset and like uh, it gave me a new horizon of for what the things that I could uh, I could really do. Wow! So just a, a confidence builder. Yeah. I've, oh, absolutely. It gains so, so much confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I can. Yeah, I can see a wall like this or bigger, and it's no problem for me now. So that that was super cool of an experience. Uh, and yeah, it just it opened a lot of new doors, I think, you know, to have gone in this particular tour and have made this particular stop, you know, uh, invited by, by Gleo to our friend who was doing at the time what was kind of the largest mural in the United States, uh, which is extremely impressive, you know, and also seeing that, like having been part of that, it, it really is uh, uh, a game changer, you know. Yeah, for me, it was like the same. That tour and that stuff, it was amazing. It, I don't know, it's, mm, I think it's the biggest mural I have been done yet, I think. Maybe another one is quite big as, as this one. And it was a break point for my career. I, I remember I talked with um, Felipe, and before the tour, I didn't do a big mural. I just help people doing big murals, but I, I, I didn't do that. And it was so good because it was an opportunity for me. And the same as Felipe right now, when, when I'm seeing a, a huge wall, it's not that, uh, like, I don't feel like I can't. Yeah, I, in fact, right now, um, tomorrow, I'm going to give a workshop for the people, for the artists from my town, um, how to get involved with uh, grand format murals, like big murals. So yeah, this experience gave me that confidence to right now teach my people and my friends here. So yeah, it was so nice. Um, right now, as I told you at the beginning, I'm working with the studio things and I'm making some pieces, but um, I always want to paint as big as, as I can. And this mural was a yeah, beginning of that. Wow. Wow, that is, that is so cool to hear, right? Um, because it was just a week, we've gotten the mural, but we haven't seen the, the story of your life necessarily since. And, and so to hear, yeah, just how those directions, I don't know, you never know the impact of something, right? You guys don't know the impact of this mural necessarily in our community and vice versa. And that's why we have these conversations, huh? But but we, we do. I feel like yeah, you don't know what the impact is gonna be. But I feel like as artists, it, it, it is our it is our job to believe, you know. And and we we take we take on that creativity. And wherever you know there wasn't something, there could be something now, you know. And so um, we do. You know, for me at least, I know, and it excites me, and it, it inspires me to paint more because I know the results. I have seen the results, you know, and uh, it, it's so cool to keep going with that idea and to offer that for people. Uh, it can be very positive uh, for people's mentalities and per perspectives or point of views. And so um, I almost do it for that, you know, for humanity itself, <laughs> not even for me all that much. Yeah, yeah. And also when you open your, your art to the people, and with love, the results are going to be good. They can lose. Sure, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't lose. Yeah. Wow. Um, to bring back that, that essential question of the project, what is on your horizon? What is coming up in, in both of your lives? <laughs> uh, very exciting stuff. Yes, uh, I've been working very hard. Um, I'm also just finishing my mural season. I'm, I'm in uh, Massachusetts now in the Northeast. And so as you guys may know, it starts getting cold right around now. 
So I've just wrapped up my, my mural season. Um, I just finished the largest mural I've ever painted. It's about 5,000 square feet. And uh, I am now going into the off season to return to studio work uh, on, I, on Cape Cod. Um, I do a residency there and I'm teaching, I'm teaching a couple of workshops at the Provincetown Art Museum. And I'm teaching the explosive nature style. So that, that should be really cool, a nice challenge for myself to kind of like learn this conceptually and be able to break it down and teach it to somebody. And uh, yeah, just, just prepping studio work for, for next year. You know, I'm completing a series of 20 paintings, 20 large paintings that I've been working on for the last three years. And uh, this is it. This is when I get to finish, you know, in the next three months, I'm just gonna be in the studio painting, finishing this one series. And then uh, it's kind of been my life's work almost uh, for the last three, four years. And I haven't shown it anywhere yet. And so I'm excited to finish everything and, you know, be able to have a solo show. And that, that's, that's what I'm planning on for the rest of the year. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, for me, well, I'm right now I'm working with my, but with the foundation that I run. Um, right now we are working with the um, city, with Cali, uh, with the major city office, because we want to paint a, a festival, a, a big format festival, street art. And we are working in that right now. We don't know if it's gonna be this year, but I think it will. It will. And um, and right now I'm working in, in, with some places. One is a, a school, and the other one is a auto. I'm introducing some pieces for them. Um, right here in Colombia, we don't have that seasons, so we never stops like you because the winter, even uh, 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 Cali is a uh, all year so, uh, summer uh, city. So right now <laughs> we, have, we have a really good weather. So yeah, we can, we don't have to stop to paint outside. Um, but I want to start to paint a series of collages because I was working with that at the beginning of the year because I want to do a solo show, but I, I don't have date right now because I have the other big uh, project. So I have to schedule it, but right now I, I, don't, have, I, I don't know when. Yeah, awesome. Felipe, Ivan, thank you for your time here. Thank you for your time in Wichita. Thank you for the, your mural and, and your work. We really appreciate it. Of course, yes. Thank you so much for still, you know, keeping us in mind. And I, I hope that at some point I get to go back, you know, and hope, you know, paint some more and share with you guys and go visit uh, old walls. Thank you so much for your time and thank you to all the students uh, for tuning in. Uh, thank you all for your interest. Yes, get out there. The world is yours. Thank you so much for yeah for the invitation. And I hope all what we have telling you in this conversation helps you and you learn more about us and about the street art. And yeah, we always are open to hear about you. And if you have any question about our work or the technique of stencil, I'm always open to show and share with them with you guys. So.